So hello again. Uh, this lecture we are going to talk about uh, costs of production. As you remember, in chapter six, we talked about the production side, what determines the production capabilities. We talked about the production function, the distinction between total product, marginal product, average product, what is meant by technological change. Today, we are going to analyze another important uh, concept that any producer of any good or service is interested to know, which is the costs of production how to minimize the cost of production, what are the different costs that the firm faces in the production of any good or service. Uh, of course, whenever there is production, uh, there are costs associated with this production process. Firms need to pay for the costs of labor, they need to pay rent for land, they need to pay interest for capital and other costs of production. Uh, costs affect input choices. Why? Because the firm is always interested in minimizing its costs of production to be able to reach the maximum possible uh, profit. That's why we always say that the firm tends to choose the most efficient production technique. What do we mean by the most efficient production technique? The least costly option. The option that minimizes the costs of production. So, uh, if the firm would like to calculate the total costs, the total costs are the summation of what? Fixed costs of production and variable costs of production. Um, the fixed costs of production are the costs of production related to the fixed factors. Okay, these are uh, the fixed costs are the costs that the firm must pay even if it is producing zero units of output. For example, if I am a firm and I am renting a land on which I'm operating my business, does the land owner uh, have anything to do whether I'm making profits or losses, whether I'm producing or not? No, this is a contractual obligation. Since I am renting this land, I am obliged by the end of each month to pay the rent for the land, even if I'm producing zero units of inputs. We call this fixed costs, the costs that must be paid regardless uh, of the units of output produced, regardless the level of output, okay? It does not change by changing the level of output. The rent is a fixed amount that I must pay even if I'm producing zero units of output. While the other, on the other hand, variable costs of production are the costs of production that tend to vary or tend to change by changing the level of output, like for example, uh, the, the wages and the salaries paid to the workers. If I decided to produce zero units of input, uh, of output, am I going to pay any salaries? No. So the variable cost could be zero if I'm producing nothing, while the fixed cost is a fixed amount, even if I'm producing no level of output. Um, Total cost, of course, always goes up as you increase the amount of output. As we said, it is divided into total fixed cost and total variable costs. Okay, so if you are interested in calculating the total cost of producing a certain amount of output, you have to add the fixed costs plus the variable costs. We said, just said the definition of fixed costs, okay? Examples of it, as I said, rent for a factory, rent for an office space, rent for land, interest paid uh, on that. For example, if I'm taking a loan to operate my business and my business is not going well, I'm not producing anything. Can I tell the bank I'm not going to pay the interest on my debt? No, this is classified as a fixed cost. Even if I'm not producing anything, I'm still obliged to pay the interest on the debt. So to classify whether the cost is a fixed cost or a variable cost, you must ask yourself, am I obliged to pay it even if I'm not producing anything? If the answer is yes, then this is a fixed cost. On the other hand, if the cost tends to change, you change the level of, um, uh, of output, these are variable costs. Like what? Like, as I said, um, the, the, the salaries paid to workers, the cost of materials, for example, the cost of materials, if you're not producing anything, you are not buying any raw materials. And as you increase the level of output, the amount of materials you are paying will tend to increase.
variable cost begins at zero when q is zero because if you're not producing anything you are not paying any rent any uh, sorry any salaries you're not paying any cost of materials uh, to be able to understand total cost which is fixed cost plus variable cost we need to draw it we need to draw it if you can see on the graph uh, in the slide and I will try to make it clear here on uh, this point the fixed cost is always a horizontal line like this a horizontal line why because if quantity is plotted on the horizontal axis and total costs are plotted on the vertical axis you always draw the fixed cost as a horizontal line because it does not change by changing the units of uh, output produced if output is two units the fixed cost is the same if you are producing zero units there is still the fixed cost that you have to pay uh, if the units of um, output increase to three or four does the fixed cost change no remember that the fixed cost is the the interest on the loan the rent to the office space it is the same regardless the level of output produced so always you draw it as a horizontal line uh, while the total uh, cost okay the total cost is the summation of what the summation of the variable cost plus the fixed cost okay so the total cost starts from here okay from the fixed cost and it starts to increase when increasing the level of output you will find that at the beginning the total cost is increasing at a decreasing rate and after that it is increasing at an increasing rate and we will explain why because the slope of the total cost is something that we call the marginal cost the additional cost of each unit produced of output okay we will explain why marginal cost at the beginning tends to decrease and after a while it tends to increase but what i'm interested about in this graph make sure the fixed costs are a horizontal line make sure that the total cost is the summation of the fixed costs and the variable costs okay um, remember that the total cost at the beginning is increasing at a decreasing rate if you draw tangent lines you will find they are becoming flatter and after a certain point they are increasing at an increasing rate the tangent lines are becoming steeper this is due to the fact that the slope of the total cost which is the marginal cost is decreasing at the beginning and then after that increasing why is this the case we will explain it shortly marginal cost uh, as i explained in the graph is the extra cost always marginal in economics is the additional or the extra so marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one extra unit of output okay we could measure the marginal cost as the slope of the total cost or the slope of the variable cost curve because the only component in total cost which is changing is the variable cost is the fixed cost changing no it is a horizontal line it is always constant regardless the level of output Um, again, if you would like to see the total cost curve, remember that the total cost is first increasing at a decreasing rate. These squares tend to decrease, but beyond a certain point, it starts increasing at an increasing rate. These squares are starting to come to become bigger. That's why the marginal cost is decreasing at the beginning and then it is increasing. This is due to the law of diminishing returns that we talked about in chapter six we will come to that shortly okay another important terminology in the cost curves is the average cost average is what it is the total cost divided by the units uh, are produced the units of output produced so again average cost is the total cost divided by the units of output produced okay uh, it, uh, as we said, the total cost is the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost. By the same logic, the average cost is the summation of two things, the average fixed cost and the average variable costs. So if you are given a problem and you would like to calculate the cost curves, let's look at the schedule you have in, on this slide. 
you will find that the fixed cost is the same regardless the level of output. It is always $55. Even if you are producing zero units, yes. Even if you increase the quantity produced to six units, it remains the same, which is $55. Uh, then you have the variable cost. Note that when you're producing zero units, the variable cost is zero. Then it increases with increases in the level of output produced. Then you have the total cost, which is the fixed cost plus the variable cost. So if you are given fixed cost and variable cost and you are asked to calculate the total cost, you just add them together. How about the calculation of the marginal cost? What's marginal cost? The change in total cost divided by the change in the quantity. So if you take, for example, the first uh, um, the first uh, unit, okay, and you would like to calculate the marginal cost, it will be 85 minus 55, okay, which is the change in total cost, divided by the change in quantity, which is 1 minus 0, which is 1, because the quantity here is increasing by 1 unit. So the marginal cost of the first unit will be $30. Average cost, how can I calculate it? Total cost divided by quantity of output produced. What about average fixed cost? The fixed cost divided by the quantity of output produced. What about average variable cost, which is the last column in the table? Variable cost divided by the quantity of the output produced. Uh, here you have all the definition. Average fixed cost, as I said, is fixed cost divided by quantity. Is the quantity increasing the quantity of output produced? Yes. Is fixed cost a fixed number or it is a changing number? As we knew from the table before, it is a fixed number. When you divide a fixed number by an increasing quantity, what will happen to the average fixed cost as a curve? It will tend to decrease. Why? Because the denominator is increasing while the numerator is held as constant. This results in the fact that the average fixed cost is decreasing or folding. Uh, what's the logic behind it? The logic is that as the firm produces and sells more output, it spreads the overhead costs or the fixed costs over more and more units, which makes the average fixed cost what decreases. So mathematically, we know why it decreases, because the quantity is in the denominator, it is increasing, and I'm dividing a fixed quantity with increasing units. So this implies that the number, the average fixed cost is decreasing. The logic behind it is that as you produce more, you are spreading the fixed payments over larger units produced of output. So if I would like to see the graphs for the cost curves, what do they look like? We agreed that the average fixed cost is a decreasing curve like this. It is a rectangular hyperbola. It tends to decrease as you increase the units of output produced because you are spreading the overheads over a larger amount of uh, output. We have the marginal cost. You remember the marginal cost? We said it is the slope of what? The slope of the total cost curve. We said that the total cost at the beginning is increasing at a decreasing rate, implying that the slope or the marginal cost curve is decreasing, which is this region. And then when the total cost starts to increase at an increasing rate, the marginal cost curve will start to increase like this. Okay. And then you have the average variable cost, which is a U-shaped curve like this. And you have the average cost curve, which is again, a U-shaped curve like this, okay? So again, this is the average fixed cost curve. It is always decreasing, okay? The marginal cost starts with a region when it is decreasing, then starts to increase. Uh, then the average variable cost curve is U-shaped, and as well, the average cost curve is U-shaped. Note that the distance between the average cost curve and the average variable cost tends to decrease. If you find, you will look at this distance, it tends to decrease as you increase the quantity of output produced. Why? What is the difference between average cost and average variable cost? Average cost curve minus average variable cost is the average fixed cost. And since the average fixed cost is always decreasing, this implies that the distance between the average cost and the average variable cost is always decreasing.
And we will now in a moment explain the relationship between marginal cost curves and average cost curves. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, the relationship between average cost curve and marginal cost curve, which is very important. The relationship between average cost and marginal cost curves is that whenever the marginal cost is below the average cost, whether it is average cost or average variable cost, the average cost is decreasing. Whenever the marginal is below the average, the average is decreasing. Whenever the marginal is above the average, the average is increasing. Why is this the case? It is a bit confusing maybe for you. Let's talk about something different than economics, okay? Let's assume, for example, we are measuring the average height of people in a room, okay? This is the average. And an additional person came in the room. This additional person or the marginal is a football player. The football player, uh, his height is larger than the average height of the people in the room, right? So this means that marginal, which is the additional person that entered, is higher than the average. If this is the case, when I recalculate the average height of the people in the room after this um, basketball player came in, will the average be higher or lower? It will be higher. This implies that when the marginal is greater than the average, it pulls the average upwards okay this is how you remember it while on the other side if you are measuring again the height of the people in the room and the small person like myself came in i will pull the average what downwards the this means that when the marginal is below the average the average tends to decrease okay so that's why the same logic applies in economics when the marginal cost is below the average cost it pulls the average cost downwards. This is the region when the average cost is decreasing. If we go back to uh, the slide with the graphs, you will find that when the marginal was below the average, the average was decreasing. When the marginal cost became above the average cost curve, the average cost curve is increasing. And the same logic exactly applies to the relationship between the marginal cost and the average variable cost curve. Okay, um, this when you work it out with numbers, you will find that whenever the marginal is below the average, the average is decreasing. And another important point, when the marginal cost is equal to the average cost, average cost reaches its minimum. When you go back to the graph, you will find the point of intersection between the marginal cost and the average cost curve. This point is the point of the minimum average cost. So to summarize, when marginal cost is below the average cost, the average cost will be decreasing. When the marginal cost is above the average cost, the average cost will be increasing. When marginal cost is equal to the average cost, average cost is at the minimum point, okay? 